There's one thing you may have noticed, I already have a simulation ready for us. There's one thing you may have noticed is that we have two measurement goals here. We're measuring purchase value and purchase count. This is what we've been using across all our examples. And maybe you've noticed that the nose ratios for purchase value always seem to be a little worse than they are for purchase count. Here the difference is about 5% to 20% for purchase value and under 1% for purchase count which is no small difference. And that could be surprising because the actual underlying measurement data and parameters that we've used are the same for these two measurement goals. So why do we see this difference and is there anything we can do about it? To answer this question, let's first take a closer look at what we're measuring here. I was saying the measurement data is the same, but this is not exactly true. Let's imagine we have a conversion count of uh, you know, 10 conversions per bucket. Our first measurement goal here is the purchase value. So if we assume that people purchase shoes for about $100 on average, each bucket will have a value of 10 times 100, so about 1,000. And our second measurement goal is the purchase count. So if for each bucket we have on average 10 conversions, well, each bucket for purchase count will, be, will have a value of about 10. So what this means is that the purchase count buckets are way smaller than the purchase value buckets. Now, remember, we were talking about scaling. Scaling is the setting right over here. It's turned on by default. Um, and scaling is a technique at uh, text and API users can decide to use. Um, so here, NoseLab is going to assume that you have implemented scaling and it does it for you out of the box. But what NoseLab does by default is not very smart in terms of scaling. By default, what NoseLab does for simplicity is it just splits the contribution budget, which you can think of as scaling budget. By default, NoseLab is going to split this budget into equally across our two measurement goals. You can see it right there. We have percentage for measurement goal one, 50% and 50% for the second measurement goal. But in reality, as we've seen, these two measurement goals are going to translate into very different orders of magnitude in terms of data. And NoseLab in the default setting doesn't really take this difference into account. And as a result, purchase count ends up benefiting from the scaling technique much more than the purchase value does. So this right here, this explains why our purchase count um, has much lower um, um, nose ratios than our purchase value. So what we could do instead to try and optimize that and rebalance that a little bit is, well, help NoseLab make better decisions in terms of scaling. So here, what I'm going to do is to assign more percentage to my first measurement goal, let's say 90, and I'm going to assign only 10% of my scaling budgets to my second measurement goal, which is purchase value, uh, purchase count, sorry. So here, what I'm hoping is that this is going to rebalance out a little bit, this, uh, this, um, this inequality between these, my two measurement goals. This may mean that my purchase count noise ratios are going to increase a little bit, but I'm hoping that this will lower my purchase value noise ratios. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm going to simulate. All right, let's compare. What do we have here? 5 to 20% and under 1%. And here, we see that our purchase value noise ratios have decreased as we expected, as we wish to achieve, below 5%, which could be more acceptable for my use case. Uh, but I result, as a result, my purchase count noise ratios have kind of increased by quite a lot. So there is probably a little bit more tweaking I could be doing here and play around with my parameters, but hopefully this gives you an overview of how you can leverage scaling and use more advanced scaling configurations to ensure that your noise ratios are acceptable for your use case across all of your measurement goals. Mm -hmm.